Often I see people lamenting about their usage of maths, that they only use it as a quick LFO or envelope, or it's too big of a module for a function utility, or it's often just thought of as a function generator. But also thinking about it as a mixer is a great way to open up the possibility of the module. I'm here today to show you why maths is the best multi-utility module around and why it's earned its place at the top of the tower. The best thing about maths is not that it could do almost anything, envelope, LFO, slew, oscillator, mixer, logic functions, self-patching, wave rectification, and so much more. It's that maths could do almost anything and more often than not, it will have additional functionality available to do almost anything else. It's the ultimate multi-utility module. In this video, I'll share six patch tips for maths that are very straightforward and hopefully get you to approach maths a bit differently. Also, be sure to note all the open channels at the end of each patch that can be used independently for other things, such as the two channels in the middle for a mixer, an open function generator, etc. You could jump to any section of the video using the time codes on screen now. And let's get started with something simple, a bipolar LFO. Of course, building a positive voltage LFO in maths is super easy. We just cycle channel one. Here it is applied to a sine wave. Let's say we want to go negative voltage with that as well. We can do that very easily with maths by just going to our sum output, turning up our channel one, and then channel three, unlike channel two, channel three is only five volts. So we go down five volts very easily and we have an exact bipolar negative five to positive five volt LFO. And we do one more quick patch here where we patch channel two and then we don't have to worry about this offsetting anything. We go into the bolt here and now channel two acts as our LFO speed. And that's the bipolar LFO. So the first thing we need with the burst generator is a trigger, which I have coming into channel one of maths. I have this trigger split to going into a kick sound on the squid sample, just so we could hear that initial hit as opposed to the bursts generated later. So the rise time is going to affect our pre-delay time before the burst starts. The fall time is going to be the amount of time that it is bursting. And the logarithmic exponential knob adjusts our time from really quick to much longer. So to activate our bursts, we're going to take our end of rise output and put it into the cycle input of channel 4. So every time it receives that trigger, it has this fall time keeping this cycle alive. And now I'm going to patch this end of cycle here into another channel of the sampler. So here already, you can hear I have some bursts. The rise time adjusts the time in between each burst, and the fall time is the length of each burst. So if you just want triggers, you could put one or the other all the way down and adjust one of the knobs. Or you get differently sized gates. And then again, adjusting our burst time from really short to very long. And then we can also adjust our pre-delay time. And that is a burst generator. To build a tremolo-like effect in maths, first I have my audio signal coming into the input here, and the unity output here, 
is going into the oscilloscope and then the audio output here. So I'll turn on my sine wave and I have the rise and fall all the way down on maths right now and you see if we adjust this we can get different waveform shapes from cutting off the rise and fall and cutting them both off till we get silence is how we're going to add that tremolo like effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is cycle channel 4 and send the channel 4 output into the both input here. I have the attenuverter in a negative position so it pushes both of our knobs upwards with each wave. And we can adjust the shape and speed of our pseudo tremolo here using the rise and fall and then also using the logarithmic exponential knob. To make a low pass gate, first we'll start by plugging our audio signal into channel one here, which we can hear when I turn rise and fall all the way down. And we're just using the unity output as our audio output. I have a wave folded sine wave coming in here. So the first step we want to do is turn our rise and fall up evenly until we don't hear the sound anymore. So we're good at about here. Next, we need our envelope for that pseudo low pass gate. So I have a trigger coming into the trigger input of channel 4 here. So anytime this trigger fires, we get our envelope, which we'll plug in from our unity output into the both input. So every time the envelope fires, it's going to be pulling both of our knobs that way. So let's hear this with the sequence. So to get that low pass gate sound, you want the rise all the way down, and you want to be more in the exponential territory, and then the fall is going to be our decay time. And we can adjust the intensity a little bit by adjusting our rise and fall, or we could go higher up and get much more subtle sound. And another great thing with maths, as opposed to a low pass gate, as we could adjust this attack time for some really interesting sounding hits. And that is a low pass gate. To make some animated slew, we're just going to use channel 1 of maths, leaving all the other channels open for other things. Like channel 4 right now, I'm pulling the envelope from the low pass gate and just feeding that into a VCA right now. I have my volt per octave sequence coming into the input here, and the rise and fall are nearly off, but up a little bit we're still not going to get any slew really with our volt per octave yet. And then we go fully logarithmic to get that portamento type slew sound. So here's our bass sequence here. It's modified version of the previous sequence. So all the way down we have no slew. And if I turn it up, we can see we get some slew on the fall or on the rise. But we want to animate that using the fall and rise inputs here. So we want to put these rise and fall up a little bit so they're not totally off, so it reacts better with the 5 volts I'm pulling from PAMS because it's not 10 volt. So the slew is going to be activated every other measure with a 5 volt gate. So here's our sequence with it applying to the rise.
so we could hear it slewing the rise every other measure. And now I think it sounds even cooler when we go into the fall here and slew that. And then we adjust this to get the amount of intensity that we want. And then we could also slew our rise or not at all and get it really tight. And that's how we could get some nice animated slew using just one channel of maths. Now I have maths patched up as a nice multi-utility for my oscillator in this patch. First, let's hear it without the oscillator. It's just a rings sequence. So we want to harmonize that with the oscillator. So I have that same trigger that's going into rings, going into maths channel one to trigger an AR envelope. I then have that same sequence that's going into my rings, going into channel two here of maths, which I have attenuated at about half value and then offset with channel three a little bit. So it's a little bit higher pitched. I have the sum output. So it reacts with those offsets going back into my quantizer before going into the oscillator. And let's hear how that sounds. So we have a nice harmonized sequence to go along with the rings there with this oscillator. But say we want to add some more variation, like a weird solo kind of thing or something. That's where channel four comes in, which I have activated by a trigger from my beat step. So when it gets the trigger, it'll activate the envelope here, which I have offsetting my sequence even more, giving it a rise and a fall kind of solo. And let's hear how that sounds. So that's how I use maths as a cool little harmonizing sequence offset for my second oscillator.